knew it, Janie said, vastly relieved. If I just don't believe in it, then it's not true. She slowly relaxed her tense muscles, and whiskers, sensing a change, began to purr. A tiny, soothing motorized sound in the night. Everything was all right now. No red creature existed in her tummy. Suddenly she felt exhausted. It was late, and she had school tomorrow. Janie slid down under the covers and closed her eyes, releasing Whiskers, who padded to his usual spot on the bed. She had a lot to tell her friends. It was Thursday, a day Janie usually hated. Every other Thursday, her mother went shopping and left her to have lunch with Uncle Gus in his big, spooky house with the shutters closed tight against the sun and shadows filling every hallway. But this Thursday would be all different. So Janie did not mind when her mother drove off and left her alone with her uncle. This time, she told herself, she would not be afraid. A giggle. She might even have fun. When Uncle Gus put Janie's soup plate in front of her, he asked her how she was feeling. Fine, said Janie quietly, eyes down. Then you'll be able to appreciate the soup, he smiled, trying to look pleasant. It's a special recipe. Try it. She spooned some into her mouth. How does it taste? Kind of sour. Gus shook his head, trying some for himself. Mm, delicious. He paused. Know what's in it? She shook her head. He grinned, leaning toward her across the table. It's owl eye soup. Made from the dead eyes of an owl. All mashed up fresh just for you. She looked at him steadily. You want me to help Chuck, don't you, Uncle Gus? My goodness, no, Janie. There is an oil of delight in his voice. I just think you'd like to know what you swallowed. Janie pushed her plate away. I'm not going to be sick because I don't believe you, and when you don't believe in something, then it's not real. Gus scowled at her, finishing his soup. Janie knew he planned to tell her another awful spook story after lunch, but she was not upset about that. Because, because there won't be any after lunch for Uncle Gus. It was time for her surprise. I got something to tell you, Uncle Gus. So tell me. His voice was sharp and ugly. All my friends at school know about the thing inside. Talked about it a lot, and now we believe in it. It has red eyes and it's furry and it smells bad, and it's got lots of very sharp teeth. You bet it has, Gus said, brightening out her words. And it's always hungry. But guess what? said Janie. Surprise! It's not inside me, Uncle Gus. It's inside you. He glared at her. That's not funny, you little bitch. You try to turn this around and pretend that... He stopped in mid-sentence, spoon clattering to the floor as he stood up abruptly. His face was flushed. He made strangling sounds. In one sound, said Janie. Gus doubled over the table, hands clawing at his stomach. <clears throat> call, call it, doctor, he gasped. Well, said Janie in satisfaction, nothing can stop it now. Janie followed him calmly, munching on an apple. She watched him stagger and fall in the doorway, rolling over on his back, eyes wild with panic. She stood over him, looking down at her uncle's stomach under the white shirt. Something bulged there. Gus screamed. Late that night, alone in her room, Janie held Whiskers tight against her chest and whispered into her pet's quivering ear. Mommy's been crying, she told the cat. She's real upset about what happened to Uncle Gus. Are you upset, Whiskers? The cat yawned, revealing sharp white teeth. I don't think so, because you didn't like Uncle Gus any more than me, did you? She hugged him. Want to hear a secret, Whiskers? The cat blinked lazily at her, beginning to purr. 
you all let me know Mr. Kruger at school? Well, yes, why? She smiled. Me and the other kids, I, I talked to him some time tomorrow about he's got something inside you. Janie shuddered deliciously. Sunday nasty. And she giggled. 